Hi, this is Franny. 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 Hi. And she's showing today at Cafe International. What made you interested in starting making these hats? The first time I went to Burning Man, I, of course, was concerned about sun on my face. I have very fair skin. So I was looking for the strongest wide brim hat I could find and I went to Chinatown and there were these very basic solid straw hats and I thought that looks good put a string so it doesn't blow away hmm that looks kind of plain what if I put oh I know pink plastic babies on it and uh, <laughs> cattle yeah that works cattle and pink plastic babies mm, still a little plain. Covered all with white lace? Yeah, I like that. All right, Franny, bringing this back on point here. <laughs> that was the first one. Artist. That We're was the first to... one. That's about where they started. So then every year I had to come up with something new to go with the outfits I was making for myself, either to just walk around in or for the fashion show, which this one was. And uh, so we have a, a collection of probably my favorite ones. So the great loves of my life are my darling husband, who's going to be playing music here tonight, my sweet puppy dog, and the San Francisco Giants. So I needed a hat to wear to day games, and since I was making pieces for this show, I thought, ah, what the heck, make a hat to wear to day games. So I have the infield. <laughs> oh, that is too cool. The, the mound is not regulation, so Scudero and Crawford can't actually see home plate. <laughs> um, <laughs> And then underneath, because nothing is plain, um, a collage of oh, wow. um, food wrappers and ticket stubs and uni transfer things that you find <laughs> at or on the way to the ballpark. <laughs> so yeah, this is my new favorite hat. Got the bats of Cooperstown. You also go to Venice periodically. I have gone to Venice for carnival. Yes, and. Uh, you make elaborate gowns. Uh, yes, I made a beautiful 18th century. I made it for the playa and then actually wore it in Venice. Shall we get out the Grand Canal now? Yes. <laughs> oh my god. So imagine this on a tall white wig. <laughs> tall white wig. Yep, tall white wig. And underneath we have the treasures of the sea. In a gold net, we have gold sea creatures underneath. Oh, that's <laughs> so I wore this to, uh, riding in a gondola in Venice. I can just imagine. Yes. Well, thank you, Franny. Thank you, Thomasina. It's going to be wonderful. Oh, here comes my wonderful husband now.
The real Annie Coulter, except no substitutes. Thank you, oh, my friend. The curator of this month's collection and my costuming mentor. And she has some beautiful pieces in the show. So Annie, tell me a little mm -hmm. how you started working with the, the vintage feel of the textiles and, and where do you get your inspiration for these pieces? Um, boy, that's a great question. Um, uh, a lot of inspiration comes to anyone that walks through LA's fabric district. They have the most outrageous and incredible things. And when you see the material, quite often the things you have to work with tells you what it wants to be. And that's definitely the case with this money dress. I had to have this money fabric. And also with the disco. Oh gosh, because yes. Uh, I love I collect vintage patterns, yeah. and so this is a 70s pattern with a modern fabric, but that fabric told me what, what it wanted to do. It was very emphatic, <laughs> as I recall at the time. And this beautiful faux sparkly, yeah, I mean, it's a real twist on a classic, isn't it? Yes, this is a, a, an authentic 50s pattern, and I've made this pattern up in several, it's the same pattern in several fabrics, and this is a very popular item in my line, if you will. I get, <laughs> I, I get a lot of commissions to make these out of um, different um, fabrics. And the funny thing, the thing that I never realized until I had this one, is that this one looks great on men. This is a woman's wrap from the 50s. And when you put this thing on a man, it just has a whole other look. So it's a truly unisex garment, particularly with this sort of bolder faux fur, the bobcat, snow, snow lace. And that was a big surprise to me. On men, it actually looks like armor. <laughs> like, a, like a sort of a, 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 a very primitive, very Game of thrones -y. Yes, exactly. Yes. I was going to say Visigoth, but that's better. That sort of thing. So, Amy, you've dressed um, various of us um, from Annie's collection. Um, tell us a little bit about, and you know, tell us a little bit about um, the walking around part of the show today. Well, we decided that it would be fun to have a fashion parade because a lot of us are, sh are exhibiting, a lot of us, three of us, half of us who are exhibiting our works here, <laughs> half of the six artists, three of six artists, it sounds like a Monty Python skit, are costumers and are exhibiting costumes. And so it was thought that it could be fun to have a fashion parade. So what I'm doing is uh, from time to time, some of my lovely friends are going to be drifting through this fine establishment garbed in something I've made or something I've collected with the idea of the, there's sort of an overarching theme for this show, for this parade, which is Mad Men back again. If you've watched the television show Mad Men, they have a lot of people in wonderful vintage clothing and my collection looks very much like what they're wearing. So I just thought I would tie that in because people are wearing these designs again. Um, Couturiers are making clothes in that style again, which I never thought I would see again. A lot of these are original pieces, some I've made from vintage patterns, um, and so forth and so on. So it's all come back again. Uh, the tailored look with the big prints is back, which I never thought I'd see. So it's a transitional 60s theme. It's not just out now hippie stuff, and it's not the very beautiful, um, tight tailored things of the early 60s. It's that transitional period that's bad. You see it on the red carpet, all the movie stars are wearing it, and I just love it. I'm really glad to see it back.
Remember, but I think it's about 60 years. Really? Wow. And you're from where? I'm from London, England. London, England. Yeah. Now, what brought you to California? Um, a, a lady. A lady. A lady, yes. <laughs> and a lady she left you here? Did she leave you here? Is that what happened? <laughs> These are all flat objects that work well in Xerox or sharp copying machines. Uh, and they were all items that were in my studio at the time when I got the idea to do it. 